Hi all, Tech Teardown here. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a deep dive here into one of my favorite features that I've found uh, in ARC so far, being the easels. And what better way to show it off than to do an easel itself. So what is an ARC easel? The easel, as they describe it, is a super simple canvas tool where you can write with text, you can draw, you can add different shapes, you can add screen captures. And like they mentioned, I think the easel really does shine when paired with Capture. So to create this easel, I actually used Capture. And you can see here that that capture that I did, that screenshot is actually showing here with the context of where I pulled it from. This is probably one of my favorite things about the screenshots here. Usually if you have a screenshot, it just renders it as a uh, PNG or an image that you don't have the context of where it actually came from. I love that you can actually click here for any of the screenshots that you take and it'll take you to the article or website that you actually pulled it from. How do you actually capture something for an easel? One of my favorite ways is just due to command shift click. So once you go to a particular page and hit command shift click, you'll see a little icon, camera icon come up that will allow you to drag on that particular page. So just to demo that, if we were to come to something like the New York Times, maybe we wanted to snip out this headline, you do command shift click and you would be able to then drag that option. Now you can see here, there's a couple different options that come up. It's automatically going to save it to my library. I can copy that image. I can send it via iMessage. I want to call out the one for edit. So let's say maybe on this particular headline, we wanted to underline something or call something out. So you could use this pencil option to do an underline. Problem is it only does it in white. So that's not super helpful. Maybe we wanted to put a circle around something. So we would call that out that way. I wish there were more adjustments here so you could really tweak this the way that you wanted, but you can play around with it in different ways. Maybe we just decide that we're just going to put this underneath just to do that call out here of that 9.1%. Maybe we'll put another box, we'll make it blue. So you can do the edit here to do all kinds of different things um, depending on what you're pulling in. And then once you're done making all of those edits, you'll be able to then pull this into your easel. Okay. So now that we've saved it to our library, we just hit escape there and we can add it directly into our easel. We can add that in and you can see here it's pulled that in automatically, which is really nice. And it's giving me that context of where I actually pulled it from as long as it's also saved the edits that I had in there. So there's two other ways you can also save. You can hit the camera icon up in the left. So that's going to be up in your bar here. So you can see that camera. So you can capture a portion of the page. Should be able to capture it the same way. Or I think maybe the easiest way for anything that's an image, if you just right click on the image, you'll see an option to capture the image and that's going to allow you to pull it in. So it's nice that you can copy any of these things in really easily. I think the best part, again, like I mentioned, is keeping the context. So I wanted to give you some examples of what you might actually use in easel for. So I've actually started using easel just to capture images of some of the favorite tools that I use, and it has links out to all of those favorite tools. So I'm going to continue to grow this. I'm a visual person, so I like seeing what the tool actually looks like rather than just a list or a table or a list of uh, links without knowing what it actually looks like. This will be a really creative way to create bookmarks or share different tools that you're using. Also, it doesn't work perfectly with all links that come in. For example, I linked a Figma file in here. You can see it doesn't really give you much context, so th that could use some work. I probably wouldn't keep that in there, so I would just delete that out. I think it really shines when you're trying to do something around just curating images or quotes. So you can see here, maybe I'm creating a board for tech inspiration, just my favorite images. Maybe it's a YouTube video that I really enjoyed. Maybe it's a quote from an article that I was reading. It really begs the question that we could probably make this even better if there were things like snippets. So making it really easy to snip things out from text instead of doing this sort of hack that I'm doing, which is just highlighting the text and making it an image snippet. 
And it'd be awesome if you could do sound clips. Maybe it's a way that you can snip something from YouTube video, maybe a podcast that you're listening to on web, maybe snipping out that audio and being able to paste it into a board so you can get back to it at any time. Another option is maybe using it for a blog post. This is just a demo example of how that blog post might look. I really love that it's just flexible. You can move this text around wherever you wanted. You can resize it in different ways. You can also change the different style of the fonts. And with the images, those can also be behind. You can send it to the back, cover it however you like. And that's really the best benefit of using easels is that flexibility. Because what you might ask is, why not create a blog post in something like a note? And the reason you wouldn't do that in a note is it's just not as flexible. So when I try to take this image, it's not really easy to move around. There's not much that you can do with it. It takes up a lot of the blog post here. I can't move things around. I just find that using an easel for things is a lot more flexible. So a lot of different ways that you could use easel. I'm excited to see even more examples of how people are using this. One example that I saw recently on Twitter was someone who was just collecting their favorite posters from movies. So a lot of different things that you can do. And looking at any of these easels would be really easy because you're able to share. So when you go to the share options, you can create these links. You can make it private so only you are viewing it, which is there by default. Or you can set it to view only so that you could share it with anyone on the internet. And I think this is really where it becomes fun. You can share these links, maybe make it collaborative, have other people work on it if you really wanted to. And they're all their own distinct URL. So you can see this link is hosted on arc.net. And so you can share that link with whoever wants to take a look at it or on your profile. One more feature just to highlight here. Maybe you didn't like the color palette here. You can change it to be uh, different. So you can go from vibrant to chill, and that's going to change the colors and different options that are available to you here for the different items that you put in there. So just a nice little tweak here. You can see these colors will change. If I change the color pilot to vibrant, we get a different set of options there. So easel, really cool feature. I really enjoy building these different boards. I'm excited to see how they build it out. I'm sure they're going to add a lot more functionality to it, but this is so far one of my favorite features of Arc. So please hit subscribe if you like these videos. Let me know what other questions you might have. And thanks for watching.